For the St. Louis football Cardinals, the 1970s was a decade of elation and frustration. Cardinal fans supported their team in record numbers and were rewarded with two divisional championships. One on the playing fields of St. Louis with a wide open big play style evident in their nickname, the Cardiac Cardinals. In the year since their arrival in St. Louis, the Cardinals have seen the great years and the not so great years. As they prepare for their 20th anniversary season, the Cardinals draw on their past and that which guides them, their character, their heart. The confident struggle was revealed in the faces of the 70s, faces instrumental in the Cardinal future. It was the character of those teams that was unique, a vital glow that reflected their success a certain togetherness that makes the Cardinals what they are. Much of this spirit was bred by a coaching staff whose enthusiasm was infectious. Quarterback Jim Hart remembers them well. When you look back on it, you wonder what great magic they worked. And it wasn't great magic. It was just they instilled a belief in us. And we won a couple of games like that, and all of a sudden, everyone believed. And that's what it takes. It was a magic of sorts epitomized in 1974 against the Dallas Cowboys with one of the most superb individual efforts ever recorded. One of those magic men from the big play years was assistant coach Jim Hannafin, now the Cardinal head coach. I believe strongly that the 1980 Cardinal football team has more talent, better personnel than the teams of 1974, 75, and 76, the cardiac cards. And if we get back the enthusiasm of those years where we had a terrific feeling of togetherness, the camaraderie, then, hey, we're going to be right back where we want to be. Sunrise slides from peak to peak Where the air is crisp and the water's clear And there's just one beer that's brewed up here Taste the high country Taste the high country Taste the high country Taste Coors Once you taste the high country, no downstream beer will do. Coors is brewed with pure Rocky Mountain spring water and its own special high country barley. It's no downstream beer. It's no city beer. It's Coors. It's the high country. I'm up to Coors. Opening day, 1979. Optimism prevailed as the Cardinals prepared to meet the arch-rival Dallas Cowboys. Known primarily as an offensive team, it was the swarming St. Louis defense that was responsible for limiting the defending National Conference champions to 10 first half points. Dallas quarterback Roger Starbuck was reintroduced to a St. Louis blitz that precluded the first Cardinal touchdown of 1979. Jim Hart to tight end Al Chandler. For most of the afternoon, all attention was directed toward the debut of a rookie running back from Miami, Otis O.J. Anderson, 
who was welcomed to the NFL face-to-face -face by the Dallas Doomsday defense. Anderson's initiation period was brief. The coming of a new OJ was apparent. This juice was loose. The 33-yard burst inspired the Cardinals' go-ahead touchdown. Kelly is to the left and Gray is to the right. Hart is back to throw on the first down play. Under pressure on loads to Kelly. Touchdown! Pat Kelly! And the Cardinals tie up the ball game. While Tilly scored, Anderson refueled. A little fresh air, and it was all systems go. First down at their own 23. Another running play to Anderson. Big hole! Anderson had a heyday with Doomsday. 193 yards, the most impressive rookie debut in 25 years. Dallas was in trouble indeed and resorted to mild trickery to take a one point lead in the fourth quarter. The Cardinals' final effort would be symbolic of the 79 season. Mike Wood's 60-yard field goal attempt on the final play of the game fell short by three feet and keynoted a season of narrow defeats. Otis Anderson had made an indelible impression on the Cowboys and was eager to join an elite group of premier NFL running backs. Against Franco Harris and the world champion Pittsburgh Steelers, the St. Louis defense again played their best against the best, shutting down holes for Harris and number 38, Sidney Thornton, while the offense opened holes for number 32, who scored the Cards' first touchdown. St. Louis came out hitting through the third period, forcing a fourth Pittsburgh turnover. The Cardinal spirit was running high as they took a 21-7 lead into the fourth quarter, but fell victim to a fierce Steeler finishing kick and a second narrow defeat to a Super Bowl team. This time, by three points. Beneath the surface of this early struggle was a developing defense, anchored by veteran ends Bob Pollard and Mike Dawson. While Dawson did the cornering, Pollard did the homing in. The tandem forced 11 quarterback sacks for 85 yards in losses. Ron Yankowski provided capable relief at either end. On any team, the best defense is clearly a team effort. Perhaps the strongest contingent of Cardinal defenders are the linebackers. The 3-4 defense demands quickness, agility, and speed from these men. This comes in the form of number 55, Eric Williams. Joining Williams are outside linebackers number 57, Mark Arneson, and number 58, John Bearfield. Shoring up the inside are number 56, Tim Carney, and number 53, Steve Niels, who specializes in lateral pursuit. Rookie Calvin Favron and Kurt Allerman, number 50, 
round out a firm linebacking future for St. Louis. The men behind the linebackers were led by Roger Worley, the cornerstone of the Cardinals' secondary for some 11 years. Worley was his usual self in 79, and all pro. With Worley in the defensive backfield were rookie Roy Green, Lee Nelson, and number 27, Carl Allen whose five interceptions included a 78-yard return against the Chicago Bears. At free safety was Ken Stone. Number 23 was the NFC interception leader a year ago. He again led the Cardinals with six more in 79. Team leadership and tackles belong to strong safety Ken Green of the 37, whose flexibility allowed him to steal three opponent passes. It was a defense that frequently took the offensive and registered three touchdowns of their own, building their spirit for the eight. After a whole day of rafting, I find all these guys got to drink is light beer. Have you ever tasted light beer? This is Coors Light. The surprising taste of Coors Light. Hey, this isn't bad at all. Comes from pure Rocky Mountain spring water and high country barley. This is darn good. And a way of brewing that squeezes a lot of the calories out but leaves all the taste in. Guys, I'm surprised. <laughs> Coors Light, the surprise is how good it tastes. Every season has its share of unusual occurrences. On occasion, St. Louis demonstrated their togetherness on the field. Whether it was two Cardinals meeting for a brief respite, or just inviting the whole gang over for an impromptu end zone get together. the Cardinals appeared to be asleep, only to awaken at the proper moment. The Cards were especially awake at mid-season against the Minnesota Vikings. For all pro Bob Young, they would present no problem. St. Louis attacked the Vikings with five different running backs. One of them was Rod Phillips. Injured for most of the year, Phillips made the most of his brief appearances. But all in all, it was another OJ kind of day. Playing with a full thigh muscle, Anderson ran for 164 yards and two touchdowns. Forward, backward, sideways, down. Anderson reached the 1,000-yard mark in the season's 10th week. This high point in the Cardinals' year contrasted with the lowest of points, the death of J.V. Kane in the preseason. Jim Hannafin knew Kane well. J.V. was a leader in his own right. He led by example. He was a terrific loss to the Cardinal organization, to each and every member of the Cardinal team, and all of us will always remember him for what he was. A beautiful man. The year was a particularly difficult one for Jim Hart. Injuries decimated his offensive line throughout the season. There are no natural born blockers. It takes six to eight years for an offensive lineman to reach his blocking peak, a skill that must be entirely learned. Despite this, younger men like all-rookie tackle Joe Bostic, George Collins, Brad Oates, 
Tom Brahaney and the Cardinals' most improved player, Terry Steve, took over in the trenches, allowing St. Louis quarterbacks the time to locate key receivers like number 85, Mel Gray. Gray's credentials for 79 included a 78-yard touchdown against the Philadelphia Eagles, the Cardinals' longest pass play of the year. Mel Gray, the Cardinals' proven big play threat, maintained his career reception average of 20 yards per catch. Gray has caught at least one pass in 89 consecutive games, five short of Bobby Joe Conrad's team record of 94. Gray's colleagues at the wide receiver spot include Dave Steef and the sure-handed Pat Tilly. Players of Tilly's stature must rely on certain intangibles not found in any scouting report. Jim Hannafin admires one quality most. The most obvious thing about Pat Tilly is his great hands. But when I think of Pat Tilly, what I think of is a great heart. And really, it's the heart that makes Pat Tilly what he is. For the second straight year, Tilly led all Cardinal receivers in catches, total yards, and touchdowns. Steve Pisakowicz, in his third year as a pro quarterback, was given the opportunity to start in the season's final three games to gain more experience as a backup for Jim Hart. Pisakowicz responded with 15 completions, 183 yards, and a touchdown in a 29-20 win over the New York Giants. Another veteran who augments cardinal balance at the skilled positions is fullback Wayne Morris. Against the powerful Houston Oilers, Morris outrushed Earl Campbell and scored two touchdowns in the 24-17 St. Louis win. On the season, 600 total yards at nine touchdowns, plus numerous key blocks for O.J. Anderson. Wayne Moss, another positive factor in bringing back the Cardinal magic. I've been putting up fence posts all day long. Hanson finally gets here, and all he's got is light beer. Ever taste light beer? This is Coors Light. The surprising taste of Coors Light comes from pure Rocky Mountain spring water and high country barley. Not bad. Good. Really good. And a way of brewing that squeezes a lot of the calories yeah, out but leaves all the taste in. Hanson, I am surprised. Coors Light, the surprise is how good it tastes. Perceptive evaluation of college talent provided the Cardinals with the finest group of rookie talent in the NFL. Otis Anderson, Roy Green, Joe Bostic, Calvin Favron, and number 33, the Otis Brown. Employed primarily as a short yardage specialist, Brown's power was evident in the open field, where he created his own power alleys, good for over 500 yards and seven touchdowns. The quality of the St. Louis special teams was enhanced with the acquisition of fourth-round draft pick Roy Green. Green joined teammate Willard Harrell as one of the league's top kick return specialists. And his 106-yard return against the Dallas Cowboys tied an all-time NFL record.
but foremost among all rookies was Otis Anderson. All-decade tackle Dan Deardorff recognizes the potential of the league's number one rookie. I'm going to be very disappointed if, if the offensive line stays healthy. There's just no reason Otis Anderson shouldn't get 2,000 yards plus this season. Anderson received every conceivable honor accorded a rookie. Over 1,600 yards on the ground, 10 touchdowns, and an incredible future. Anderson developed much of his unique running style by chasing rabbits. In 1979, he became the rabbit and the target of the hunt. O.J. Anderson, National Conference Player of the Year. The emergence of Anderson, coupled with the appointment of head coach Jim Hannafin, ushers in a new decade that promises to be the best ever. Well, the folks on the football Cardinals, and I'm talking about the players, and I've talked to most all of them, we're just downright excited. Uh, uh, Jim Hannafin, in everyone's mind, was the person to hire as, as head coach of this ball club. Uh, every man on his team loves him. We respect him. Uh, we know he's tough. A lot of people talk about uh, his relationship with the players and uh, how he's a friend along with being a coach, and that's very true. But every man on his team respects him as, a, as an authoritative figure. Uh, believe me, I've been with Jim Hannafin for a long time, and he's, he's as tougher, tougher than any coach I've ever played for. And uh, we're excited, and we're going to play for him, uh, and we're going to be an exciting ball club to watch. Exciting indeed, with an abundance of youthful talent added to the enthusiasm of proven veteran performers, a cardinal renaissance is at hand. St. Louis will welcome the new decade with a new match.